Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with the Mighty Jingles and today I'm going to be taking a look at the two new Pan-Asian destroyers which are going to be introduced, or in fact one of them already has been introduced, into World of Warships and they are the People's Republic of China An Shan Tier 6 destroyer and the Republic of China Lo Yang Tier 8 destroyer. Very important you don't get the two mixed up. Um, well, hang on, aren't the People's Republic and the Republic the same place? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, hell no. No, don't go there. Well, it depends. If you ask anybody in the People's Republic of China, yes, they are the same place. But if you ask anybody in Taiwan, the Republic of China, oh, no. <laughs> no, definitely not. Um, and there's a reason, of course, why the Republic of China, Taiwan, are sailing an ex-American destroyer, and the People's Republic of China or sailing an ex-Soviet destroyer, but that's about as far into the whole politics of the situation as I want to go in a World of Warships video. Suffice to say, one of these ships belongs to Taiwan and one belongs to China, and we're going to be taking a look at them both. So, beginning with the Anshan. Named after the city of Anshan in China, this is a premium tier 6 Chinese destroyer. It started off in life as a Soviet Genevni class destroyer. Genevni is obviously also available in World of Warships as the Tier 5 Soviet destroyer. How did it end up in China? Well, after the Chinese Civil War, which technically never actually ended, China began gearing herself up. Initially she wanted to buy some second-hand warships from Britain, but thanks to the Korean War that didn't quite work out as planned, and so she turned to her communist neighbour to the north, the USSR said, here's a couple of tons of gold, what have you got for us? And uh, the USSR said, anything for our communist brothers, and sold them a whole bunch of old Second World War vintage destroyers. The Anshan herself actually used to be the Soviet Gnevny class destroyer, the Rokordny, which had a largely uneventful World War II, as did most of the Soviet Navy when they weren't instigating the single greatest losses of life in maritime history by torpedoing refugee ships escaping from eastern Prussia. But hey, she's Chinese now, and she served the People's Liberation Army Navy for 38 years before finally being decommissioned in 1992. So, let's take a look at her and see what you're going to get for your money. Although, she isn't available for sale just yet, but she is likely to be very, very soon, and I have no idea how much it's likely to cost. Although, if what they're doing with the Lo Yang is any indication, it is probably going to be on sale as a package and as a standalone ship for a reduced price. So... Since the Anshan is pretty much a Genevni class destroyer, that's exactly what we're going to compare it against. The Genevni at tier 5 isn't a bad little ship, um, although it is lacking in a couple of areas, and it's those areas that have been addressed in the Anshan and why the Anshan is a tier 6 and not a tier 5 like the ship upon which it's based. The Genevni had terrible anti-aircraft guns, which isn't such an issue when you're in a destroyer. The idea is you avoid aircraft rather than try to attack them but it also had pretty bad torpedoes, which is a bit of an issue for a destroyer. Nevertheless, the Genevni does have very, very good guns, and the Anshan has exactly the same ones, four 130mm deck guns, each housed in their own turret. Unfortunately, the Anshan has exactly the same problem with those 130mm guns that the Genevni did. Very, very slow turret rotation speed. They're both very fast and manoeuvrable ships with a top speed of 38 knots and a turning radius of 610 metres, which is kind of weird because the 6.1 second rudder shift time on the Genevni is better on the Anshan. It's almost two seconds faster, and yet they both have the same turning radius and top speed. Bizarre. They're also very, very stealthy ships with exactly the same concealment rating, surface detectability range of 7 kilometres, air detectability range of 3.6 kilometres. And that leads us on to the one area, aside from its superior anti-aircraft defence, where the Anshan is a clear winner over the Genevni. The Genevni will be detected on the surface from a range of 7 kilometres, and its torpedoes only have a 4 kilometre range. The Anshan has improved torpedoes with an 8 kilometre range. And in that respect, it means that the Anshan is actually a lot more like the Gremyashki, the Soviet premium tier 5 destroyer, than the Genevni upon which it's based. And in fact, the Anshan is very, very similar to the Gremyashki. The differences between the two ships are negligible. Well, there is one major difference between the two ships. The Gremyashki is a Tier 5 premium, and the Anshan's a Tier 6. Now, the Gremyashki is a very, very good, some might even say overpowered, premium Tier 5 destroyer. And the Anshan would also be a very, very good premium Tier 5 destroyer. But it's not a premium Tier 5 destroyer. It's a premium Tier 6 destroyer. And it's really no better than the Gremyashki at Tier 5. Now, that's no bad thing, of course, because, well, the Gremyashki is very, very good. 
At the same time, however, this is going to be more expensive than the Gremiashki, and it's no better than the Gremiashki. Of course, being as good as the Gremiashki is no bad thing, but at the same time, if you're looking for a premium mid-tier destroyer, and you don't really care which nation it comes from, the Gremiashki is definitely going to be a better bet than this thing, purely and simply because they're pretty much exactly the same ship, and the Gremiashki gets better matchmaking. So, how does it play? Well, at the risk of sounding repetitive, it plays exactly like a Gremiashki, or it plays exactly like a Genevni, except with good torpedoes, because that's exactly what the Gremiashki is. And like the Gremiashki and the Genevni, it has similar limitations. Its four 130mm guns are very, very good, but they all share that really, really bad in excess of 30 seconds, 180 degree rotation speed, which means while these guns are good, you still want to be keeping your enemy at arm's length, where the turret rotation speed isn't going to be such an issue. And don't forget, of course, you've got these 8km range torpedoes, and they are pretty fast as well, so opening up with your guns isn't necessarily going to be the first choice in most combat situations. You're far better off using your 7km service detection range to try to close to within range of those big old enemy battleships or cruisers, and, and get some torpedo kills at the start of the match, because don't forget, while your firing range of the guns is in excess of your 7km surface detection range every time you fire the guns on a destroyer, you increase the range at which you're going to be detected by around about 4km. So you're pretty much going to be spotted whenever you start firing these guns. And it does take a certain amount of skill in order to get those torpedoes away without being spotted, because you can launch them from 8km, but you'll be spotted from 7km. So you only have that 1km window of opportunity in order to get them away without coming under fire from all those cruisers. Now, this destroyer has just made a very, very serious error of judgement. His engine's just been knocked out. Here you can see the guns at work. I was kind of lucky here, actually, because I turned away from those cruisers up ahead, including the Cleveland that I just hit with one of the torpedoes, and they all happened to be pointing in exactly the same direction as this enemy destroyer came steaming around the corner. Of course, I'm spotted, He's gotten his torpedoes away, and I'm coming under some serious gunfire from those cruisers at the back. Well, look at all of that. Enemy destroyer is attempting, his engines have been knocked out, to hide in smoke. But with his engines knocked out, he's slowing to a halt. He's obviously used his repair kit. And while I can only fire my two rear gun batteries at him, that's good enough. These are very, very good 130mm guns, and he's pretty much, well, he's never going to get out of here. And the guns do have a very good range, which means you're able to keep this barrage up even while you're steaming away from him at maximum speed, because as soon as he came around the corner, I got spotted, and all of those cruisers behind me, including a very, very pissed-off Cleveland, immediately started opening up on my little destroyer, because everybody loves sinking destroyers, don't they? And that's another reason why you really want to try to keep this ship at maximum range wherever possible. It does have very good speed and maneuverability, but the further away you are from whoever's shooting at you, the more time you have to react and dodge incoming fire. And I managed to get away, despite coming under concentrated fire from all of those cruisers, without taking a single hit. Now, this isn't the first battle that I played in the Anshan. The first battle that I played in the Anshan, I have a slight confession to make. I didn't bother to train up a new commander. The default commander that you get with these ships does not come with any crew skills, so I actually played my first game in this thing without situational awareness, and you can imagine how well that went in a destroyer. <laughs> the first time I knew I'd been spotted uh, was when I started getting shot at. Speaking of being spotted, here's another suicidal destroyer who's just lit me up once again for all of those cruisers behind me. Great. All those cruisers behind me have gone, it's a destroyer, get him! And so, once again, I'm having the steam billy big steps away from all of those cruisers while trying to kill the destroyer, who's lighting me up as a target for all of those enemy ships. And there he's got his torpedoes away. And that's a pretty good spread, actually. He's definitely going to hit this guy. Oh yes. Oh yes, indeed. Now he's dropped a smoke screen. I can't see him in the smoke screen, but I can see my shots hitting something. And I can see his shots hitting something, so I just, there he is. Yep, shots on target. And once again, my guns all do happen to be pointed in exactly the right direction. That destroyer actually did me a favour by almost killing that cruiser with his torpedoes, because as soon as those enemy ships to the rear spotted that low-health cruiser, they immediately switched fire to him and finished him off. Um, now, of course, they're shooting at me again, but I'm pretty sure I'm no longer detected. We, we definitely nailed that destroyer in the smoke screen, and I haven't fired my guns for a while, 
and the detection range increase that you suffer from firing your guns lasts for 20 seconds after you last fire them, so I'm pretty sure I'm no longer spotted at the moment. Next, we've got a nice big fat juicy target to shoot at. There's a Nagato over there who has just run out of friends, so he's got no escorts, and we've got myself closing in from the rear, and the Sims sitting up there in a the smokescreen, abusing the detection mechanics, putting some fire into him from the flank. My first shot at this guy, actually my second shot at this guy, actually set him on fire, which is nice. I'm closing in from the rear, hoping that he's going to be fully engaged with the Sims, and there's also a Congo steaming in from that direction over on his left. Keep an eye where that Cleveland is. The dive bomber's going away, he's still burning merrily, he hasn't bothered trying to put these fires out. Of course, the second I fire the guns, I get detected, but I'm not too worried. There goes the dive bomber strike because he's broadside on to all of those other ships on his left hand side and those are the guys that he's engaging so as long as I don't stray into the range of his secondary batteries and even if I do most of the secondary batteries in these battleships are located in the side so most of them aren't going to be able to fire at me either so this is pretty much just free damage as long as he doesn't turn around because he realizes there's a jingles behind him <laughs> I should be pretty good He's on fire in multiple locations now, and he's turning around. Hmm. Why is he turning around? Yes, he's realised there's a jingles behind him. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh, and I've set him on fire again. A battleship's going to have to get pretty lucky to hit a destroyer at this kind of range. Although, well, he was engaging the Sims up there, so he really only has to get lucky once because he's probably switched to high explosive ammunition to deal with that enemy destroyer, but he's turning around, trying to avoid the torpedoes fired at him, he's on fire again, and now the Congo's steaming around the corner of that island up there, and he's, yeah, done. Ah, yes, dive bombers. Dive bombers are a significant threat to destroyers. Now, while I did make a big song and dance about the vastly superior anti-aircraft armament that the Anshan has over the Genevni, it's still not that good. I saw these dive bombers in plenty of time to designate them as a priority target for all of my anti-aircraft guns and they still managed to get all of their bombs away and escape without shooting a single one down. So, yes, it does have good AA guns for a destroyer, but they're still destroyer AA guns. They're not that good. In fact, watch this. Here come the torpedo bombers. Now, they're taking fire from myself, a Sims, and a Congo. And a Congo has a pretty nasty anti-aircraft armament as well. And this guy, despite loitering around and waiting under anti-aircraft fire for that Congo to come around the corner so he could get his torpedoes away, still manages to get all of his torpedoes away before he loses a single aircraft. So don't be too excited about the better anti-aircraft guns on the Anshan, because they're still not really that good. What these AA guns are good for, however, is when you're being shadowed by, for example, an enemy fighter squadron. The fighters can't do any damage to you themselves, but what they can do is keep you lit up for all of the other enemy ships, making it an absolute nightmare for a destroyer who's being followed by one of these fighter squadrons. If you're in the Genevni, there's very, very little you can actually do about it, thanks to its absolutely terrible anti-aircraft guns, but in the Anshan, you can at least give them something to think about, and eventually shoot them down and be able to stealth up again. Meanwhile, this battle is rapidly coming to a conclusion. I've switched to armor-piercing here to try to do as much damage as possible to this enemy carrier. Close to torpedo range, I've got some shots off. I'm not convinced they're going to hit, however, it's a Japanese carrier. They're very maneuverable, and he's almost certainly going to avoid my fire. But I can't loiter around here any longer. I'm far too close. And all those enemy ships have switched fire to me. And here it comes, and I'm taking more hits. I really do need to get out of here. I've got no smoke charges left. All I have is my speed maneuverability, and hoping that eventually they're going to start shooting at something else, but that's a pretty forlorn hope. I'm in a destroyer after all, and I'm on very, very low health. Uh, oh crap, here come the dive bombers. I need to take cover, as well as using my own anti-aircraft guns, try to... Oh jeez, I just missed. I think we shot a couple of them down. Um, you're never going to... No, we didn't shoot any of them down. <laughs> As I said earlier, and as I demonstrated earlier against those torpedo bombers, the Anshan's AA guns are good for a destroyer, but they're not really good enough. Uh, I attempted to make the most of it by ducking amongst this uh, group of friendly ships to take advantage of their anti-aircraft cover, but the dive bombers still managed to get their bombs away without losing any aircraft on the way in. 
uh, and I was, again, very lucky to not actually take any direct bomb hits. We've managed to nail one of them, there's only two enemy ships left. And, uh, yeah, wouldn't like to be in his shoes right now. This was actually quite a pleasant game to play, and when I say that I'm referring to the chat. Um, you can see there that uh, one of the guys on the enemy team um, claiming that he took an early torpedo hit from what he could only assume was Jingles, and yes, that was the guy in the Cleveland. <laughs> if you're watching this video, yeah, it was me. But um, it was actually quite a good-natured match. One of the guys on the enemy team got himself torn apart by Arfuso, and actually, once he died, stopped to compliment the Fuso on his shooting. So I sent him a compliment during the match. There's, of course, the system in World of Warships where you can not only report players for bad behaviour, you can also compliment them for good behaviour. So I used one of my compliments on him. Meanwhile, um, well, only one ship left. There it is, the Congo. Our New York-class battleship was not having a particularly good day. Um, he's putting some fire into that Congo, and they're all missing. And that's not the first time he's missed. <laughs> um, <laughs> The poor guy never actually managed to do a single point of damage in the entire game. Every shot he fired missed, and he's about to start getting very, very upset about it in chat. <laughs> As I'm pouring the fire into this Congo, uh, quite safely because he's engaged with uh, targets that are far closer and far easier to hit. Come on, some of them land. There we go. Oh, more aircraft. Shows you how much attention I was paying. I just shot more aircraft down, didn't even realise. It's not an issue at the moment, of course, because with the carrier dead, they they don't have any orders. And there he is in chat. There's the New York. <laughs> not one shot landed on target this entire game. I don't know why the New York's a good ship, but wait until you see how much this poor guy scored at the end of the match. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's actually quite humiliating. <laughs> he is very, very upset. <laughs> um, as you can kind of understand. But this Congo's about to go down. Come on, it would be nice to actually get a kill in this game. I think I've done enough damage. Come on, come on. Die, you bastard. Yep, yeah, set him on fire. Come on. Oh, it's taken forever for these shells to land. And bingo, got him. So, pretty good match in a pretty good ship. I do have to give credit where credit's due. The Anshan is a nice ship to play. My only issue with the Anshan is that it's no better than the Gremiashki. And the Gremiashki's tier 5, so if you absolutely definitely have to get yourself the Chinese warship, well, you don't have any choice. The Anshan is the only one available. On the other hand, if all you want is a good premium mid-tier destroyer, the Gremiashki is almost certainly a better bet. That's not taking anything away from the Anshan, of course. It is a good ship and it is fun to play. So, how about those post-battle scores? And there I am. Yeah, fourth. Not bad. Not great, but not fantastic. I have actually done substantially better than that, as far as the team list is concerned, while sailing the Anshan. Unfortunately, I lost every single one of the games. Still, it could have been worse. I could have been that poor guy in the New York, right down there at the bottom of the team list, <laughs> who, who didn't hit a single thing throughout the entire course of that battle, and was having a really, really bad day. No idea why, the New York's a good ship. But anyway, how about the Lo Yang, the Taiwanese Tier 8 premium destroyer? This is the ship that's already earned the nickname of the PayPal Benson. Why the PayPal Benson? That's exactly what it is. It's not just a Benson-class destroyer, it is the USS Benson, first ship of the name, which was sold by the USA to Taiwan, the Republic of China, in the 1950s, after it was decommissioned from the US Navy. She served with the Taiwanese Navy until 1975 when she was scrapped, at which point she was replaced by yet another ex-US Navy destroyer, the USS Allen N. Sumner, which was also renamed the Lo Yang. I'm not going to spend too much time going over the stats of this ship because, well, it's been in World Warships since the beginning. It is a fully upgraded USS Benson. It's exactly the same. There are no differences whatsoever other than the camouflage pattern and the flag that she flies. The Benson and the Lo Yang are both very, very good ships. They have fantastic guns. They were, for a long time, the first American destroyer that had a surface detection range that was less than the launch range of its torpedoes, although a recent patch gave the Mahan at Tier 7 the ability, with its fully upgraded torpedoes, to also launch its torpedoes from outside of suicide range. 
When it comes to setting up this ship, however, there is definitely one thing that I would recommend above everything else if you can afford it. It is expensive, it's going to cost you 2 million credits, but it's definitely going to be worth it because this is a high tier ship. It can fit the Concealment System Modification 1, which reduces the range at which you'll be detected and has numerous benefits above the obvious. By default, the Low Yang will be detected on the surface at a range of 7.2 kilometers. When you fit this modification, that drops down to 6.4 kilometers. Now, the Lo Yang has two different torpedo options. The default torpedoes have a range of 9.2 kilometers, which gives you almost three kilometers to play around with where you can launch the torpedoes without being detected. They're not particularly fast, however. The upgraded torpedoes are significantly faster and therefore much, much more dangerous at short range, but they only have a six kilometer range. I recommend you stick with the default torpedoes and abuse that almost three kilometer window of opportunity to launch torpedoes in this thing without being detected. It's not all just about the torpedoes, however. Remember, every time you fire the guns, it increases the range at which you'll be detected by around about 4 kilometers, which means that when the Lo Yang fires its guns, it's going to be detected at a range of 10.4 kilometers, and its guns have a range of 11.6 kilometers. Can you see where I'm going with this? With that concealment system mod fitted, it is entirely possible in this thing, and the Benson, to be able to blaze away with your guns without the benefit of a smoke screen and remain undetected by enemy ships providing you keep it in that relatively narrow sweet spot where you can fire the guns without being seen. This match was actually a horrible defeat, but it does demonstrate what you can do to abuse the detection mechanics in this ship with the concealment modification fitted. At the moment I'm quite easily able to launch torpedoes without being detected, although I'm still a little too close to that enemy at go to be able to fire my guns without giving my position away. So, turn away, head in the opposite direction, extend the range a little we are losing this match quite horribly. I'm, I'm still inside the range at which I'm going to be detected, but pay attention. As soon as I fire, I will be detected here. But I'm heading away, and he's occupied with somebody else. Pay attention to how far away I get. There we go, I'm spotted now. And I'm still detected. And I keep firing. And he's going to run into two of my torpedoes, which is nice. I'm still detected, but not for long. Bang, there you go, 10.4 kilometers. My guns have a range of 11.6. From 10.4 kilometers out, he can't see me anymore. And I'm able to keep putting the fire in. And he's done. Of course, the biggest threat to life and limb when you're sailing a destroyer of any type in World of Warships isn't so much giving your own position away through careless use of your guns um, and coming under massed fire from the enemy cruisers but certainly at the initial stages of any match it's managing to get in a position to spot the maximum number of ships on the enemy team without being detected by their destroyers. And there he is, a Fabuki. He spotted me at more or less exactly the same time I spotted him and it's not often that happens when you're sailing what's basically an American destroyer. Of course, the thing about destroyers is any time you get hit, you tend to lose a major system, like your engine or your steering. So, with all of those cruisers behind him, I'm taking no chances. Turn around, drop smoke, repair my engines and steering, and make sure I keep that smoke screen between myself and all of those enemy cruisers. And the Fubuki doesn't change his course and speed, and runs right into one of my torpedoes, which is kind of nice. If the Fubuki had been alone out there, I would certainly have stayed around to engage him with the guns because I'm basically an American destroyer and my guns are way superior to his. But he wasn't alone. There's a lot of friendly cruisers behind him. And there he is, and he's about to die. I open up with the guns. I'm detected again, but I'm only detected by the Fubuki. And he actually, it wasn't even the guns that sank him. That was flooding damage from the torpedo. He never bothered to repair it. So as soon as he dies, I'm no longer detected. Unfortunately, I don't stay undetected for long, despite my best efforts, and that is entirely down to the efforts of the enemy aircraft carrier. There go his dive bombers, and any second now I am going to get spotted by those aircraft. And this is not a good time to be spotted by aircraft, particularly dive bombers, because I'm in gun range of an awful lot of enemy ships. The Lo Yang's AA guns aren't bad at all, but well, again, they're destroyer anti-aircraft guns, and I'm not going to shoot down two squadrons of dive bombers, so I turn my anti-aircraft guns off, the bombers lose contact. 
heave a sigh of relief after launching my torpedoes against that Colorado. But then the dive bombers get lost in a smoke screen and I can't see them anymore. Cruiser at the back there, firing at my last known position. I think I'm clear. Remember, there's still some dive bombers around. And I've been detected by aircraft again. I can't see the little buggers. But they can see me. <laughs> and here it comes. And I have no idea how I managed to avoid two strikes by full dive bomber squadrons. But you know, just need to hold on for a few more seconds, dodge the incoming fire, and as soon as the dive bombers pull back out of range, I'm no longer detected. So that was kind of close. So about a minute later I'm looking for something to sink and I really want to kill that York because he basically has a massive hard-on for me. Um, which is understandable, he's a cruiser after all and I'm in a very very dangerous destroyer. I'm waiting for his course to stabilize. You don't want to be firing off your torpedoes when you can see his course adjusting like that and then it kind of straightens out a little. So one spread of torpedoes, come on that'll do and then spotted by aircraft yet again oh for God's sake this time it's fighters and what happens when a destroyer gets spotted by aircraft everybody starts shooting at the destroyer second spread of torpedoes in the water against that Colorado over there start maneuvering burning and turning trying to get the hell out of there here it comes everybody shooting at the destroyer but we're far enough away that well I get plenty of advance notice I can see the shots coming and take early steps to try to avoid it and right now I've turned the anti-aircraft guns back on because I need those fighters dead as soon as possible shot one of them down friendly fighters engaging them I, I can't do anything here while constantly being spotted from aircraft loitering overhead and shot down another one and I'm still detected by the aircraft, but bang. Fantastic. Squadron of dive bombers over there. Uh, far enough away that I am not going to be detected. And that Colorado. Do you remember I launched a spread of torpedoes against that Colorado? And there. <laughs> you can always rely on a battleship driver to keep sailing the same course and speed when enemy destroyers have been detected inside torpedo range. Battleships, don't change. We love you just the way you are. I really do like the Lo Yang, and that's no surprise. It's a Benson, and I loved the Benson back during the closed beta test when I'd actually made it as far as the American Tier 8 destroyer. Its guns are fantastic, even in a fight against another American destroyer. Like this Mayhan, who's done something very, very rash right here at the start of this particular battle of two brothers. You never take a destroyer this far alone this early in the game. Well, you're going to run into the entire enemy fleet. The Mayhan drops a smoke screen. He slows down. Now we can't see him. It doesn't matter. I can see that my shots are hitting something, so I just keep pouring fire into the same location. And this thing can put out one heck of a volume of fire, and bang, there we go. First blood, first kill. Enemy tier 7 destroyer. And remember, as long as you don't get closer than 10.4 kilometers to your target, providing you have that concealment modification fitted, you can fire your guns with complete impunity. Blaze away as much as you like, they just can't see you. Isn't this a little bit overpowered? Well, you could argue that it is, but a couple of very specific sets of circumstances have to come into play before I'm able to abuse the spotting mechanics like this. First and foremost, I only have a 1.2 kilometer window in which to be able to fire like this without being detected, and I have just been detected. They'll spot me at a range of 10.4 kilometers, and they'll still spot me at a range of 10.4 kilometers even if I haven't fired the guns for 15 seconds, because the range at which my detection range increases after firing the guns stays up for 20 seconds. So that 1.2 kilometer safe spot isn't actually as big as you might think. Secondly, Enemy destroyers are the big counter to this. If the enemy team had any surviving destroyers screening the enemy battleships like that Iowa over there from this kind of thing happening, then I just wouldn't be able to get away with it. Stealth destroyers between myself and those battleships would spot me and I would come under fire. But we've managed to nail all but one of the enemy destroyers and he's nowhere near, so I can do this without much fear of being spotted. And the third factor that would prevent me from being able to do this is aircraft. If either of these battleships had launched a spotter aircraft, I wouldn't be able to do this. If there was an aircraft carrier surviving on the enemy team who could shadow these battleships with its own aircraft, I wouldn't be able to do this. 
If any of those ships would stop sailing broadside on and actually close the distance, I wouldn't be able to do this, but none of those factors apply, so I'm able to keep blazing away at this poor and fortunate Iowa, and there's absolutely nothing he can do about it. Oh, hang on. I have actually been detected. <laughs> Somebody got closer than 10.4 kilometers. And, hmm, time to stop shooting the guns and switch to the torpedoes. My options for avoiding enemy fire here are incredibly limited because I've got the map border on the port side of the ship. It's going to take 20 seconds. There it is, stealthed up again. Torpedoes away. Let's open the distance, drop some smoke, get the hell out of here, retreat to a safe range, and repeat the whole process. Well, that's the plan anyway. Unfortunately, that Atago over there... Well, I was pretty much doing exactly the same thing to him earlier, and it really, really upset him. <laughs> and so... <laughs> he's coming after me. It might cost him his ship, but he's gonna kill me if it's the last thing he does. Um, doesn't mean I can't hurt him in the process, of course. Shot out. He is manoeuvring. He's spotted. He's definitely spotted me. I've set him on fire, and here it comes. <laughs> oh dear, that was a nasty hit. That's the thing about destroyers. They are very, very dangerous machines, but they're incredibly easy to kill. Any hit on a destroyer tends to wreck multiple components. It's usually your engine, and a destroyer that stops moving is a dead destroyer. Shooting at that at a go in this situation was actually an incredibly stupid thing for me to do, and not just because it got my ship sunk. The enemy team outnumber us. We both control two flags, and we're ahead on points, but watch what happens when he kills me. Yeah, suddenly the score difference isn't quite so big, is it? Don't forget, losing a ship doesn't just remove some firepower from your team, making it harder for your team to win. You also lose points, and the enemy team gain points. So throwing my ship away like this was actually a really, really stupid thing to do, given the score situation. However, it wasn't quite a complete disaster, although I very, very nearly lost this match for my team, because the team were able to pull it back by sinking another two enemy ships, pushing us over a thousand points, and bringing this match to a conclusion, but it was pretty close at one point. So, the Lo Yang and the Anshan, the Tier 8 and Tier 6 Premium Pan-Asian Destroyers respectively, are currently available, or at least the Lo Yang is, in the Premium Shop in a choice of two packages, one which contains a whole bunch of extra stuff, and one which is just the ship at a port slot. For my money, the Lo Yang is definitely the better of the two. It's a very, very good ship, and so it should be. It's based on the Benson. Well, it is the Benson, and the Benson is a very, very good ship. The Anshan is certainly not bad at all. However, um, it's basically a Gremiashki. And the Gremiashki is tier 5, and therefore gets better matchmaking, and is just as good. But the Anshan certainly isn't a bad ship either. It's not currently available in the premium shop, but I'm sure it will be very, very soon. So, those are the two new Pan-Asian warships, one from the Republic of China, one from the People's Republic of China, that are being introduced, if not already, then very, very soon into World of Warships. They're both pretty good ships, but... Yeah, my money goes on the low yang because the Benson's awesome. Hope you enjoyed today's video, folks, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.